Okay, so now I think we will start with the new topic, analog to digital converter. So you should know how to configure analog to digital converter. First, what is ADC? Uh, ADC, we know that from the name itself, analog to digital converter. So it converts analog voltage into digital values. Uh, naturally in the real time world, all the signals are analog, but in digital world, the microprocessors and microcontrollers cannot process these analog signals. So that is naturally in the sinusoidal, sinusoidal form. So we cannot process these analog signals. So we must convert these analog signals into digital signals. So the digital signals are usually zeros and ones. Zeros and ones. So these binary data can be easily processed by any uh, digital signal processor or any microcontroller. Okay, so you can see here in this example, the analog side, this is the orange side. So we have, for example, here 2.7 volt as the threshold. So this is the plus five volt is the maximum analog voltage value. So it means from zero volt to plus five volt and 2.7 is the threshold. And there are several points in between this threshold value and the maximum value. So for example, if we talk about this 2.7, it can be 2.71 or it can be 2.711, 2.712 and so on. So in the analog voltage or in the analog world, there are infinite number of points, infinite set of points. So because it's also considering the float floating point values. So uh, there are so many uh, values or the set of numbers available in this analog world. Uh, so if we are going to represent the analog voltage in digital, so for example, we can use eight bits, uh, eight bits in the digital side. So if you use eight bits, it means two to the power eight according to the standard. So maximum we can have only 256 number of levels in the digital side. It means we will have eight registers. The eight registers value will change zero or one, and then we can represent 256 levels. So I think in the communication networks last semester, I talked about how can we do technically analog to digital conversion. So we have to use some kind of ensembling method and then quantization, and we can convert these analog values into digital values step by step. So here we are not going to see how can we perform the analog to digital conversion. So here we are saying only some very basic. So this analog voltage side in the analog world, we have infinite set of numbers that needs to be converted into finite set of numbers. So here we don't have any uh, floating points or floating numbers. So everything is like the whole numbers. So for example, this zero, one, two, three, and so on, it go up to 255. So these values only can be represented by these uh, digital devices. These are registers or one or two or three and so on. So here we have eight bits, so we will have R8. If I start with R0, then of course this is going to be R7. Okay, so if we are going to represent the analog voltage in eight bits in the digital side, uh, it has only 256 levels, which is finite number of points or finite set of numbers. Okay, so for example, yeah, that I mentioned here, uh, if you want to represent this 2.7 volt, maybe this 2.7 volt is with uh, corresponding to the level number 139 then how can you represent 2.71 volt? 2.71 is the next value of this one, for example. So I have to all, because I do not have any, I cannot assign this one to another level of the digital side. So I have to round off, for example, 2.71, I should consider as a 2.7 and then assign the same digital level to this one, this value, 2.71 volt is equal to level number 
So that is how we have to do that the rounding off. We have to rounding off this analog voltage to the nearest value in the digital side. So uh, yeah, it can take the nearest digital level that is 139. So that is why here we have something like, uh, uh, for example, 2.7, 0 to 2.74 and then 2.75 to 2.80. So this one can be 139 and then this one can be level number 140, something like that. So we are always going to the nearest whole number. So, okay, so technically speaking, the responsibility of ADC is to convert infinite number of points into finite number of points or finite number of levels. That is the whole purpose of this analog to digital converter. So once we convert into this finite set number of points or finite set number of uh, finite set numbers, then it's easy for us to process the process it mathematically. And we can make the addition, subtraction, comparison, a multiplication, division, any operation we can do in this microprocessor or microcontroller using this finite number of numbers, finite set of numbers. Okay, so that is the whole purpose of ADC. Uh, ADC is just one of the several peripherals in microcontroller. So microcontroller is also receiving uh, real-time values from external world. So the microcontroller must need to convert those analog signals into digital signals in order to process. For example, I can use this mic uh, microcontroller to sense the temperature, to sense the temperature of my home, or maybe it can sense the temperature of some boat or some, some other form, uh, wherever we want. So when we uh, sense the temperature using the temperature sensor, the temperature sensor will convert that physical parameter, that is the temperature, in terms of voltage, that is the analog voltage. So the temperature will be converted into voltage, and then this voltage will be converted into this analog so, uh, digital values, zeros and ones. So first it will convert into these levels, and then each level is represented by the binary values that we know that. So here is eight bits. So in the eight bits means like a zero, 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 0. So this is indicating level 0. So similarly, each bit value when you change, it will indicate one level. So for example, this is indicating 1 and then one zero is indicating level number 2 and whatever is options, so that is equal to 0. So it's like that. So that is the, the, the entire logic of this analog to digital conversion. So in the real world, we are getting this uh, any parameter and then that we are converting into this analog voltage and th this analog voltage will be, of course, we are also using some kind of amplifiers and uh, uh, filters and so on to filter out the noise. And then we are converting this analog voltage into digital voltage. For example, in the hospital, uh, someone is in the emergency ward. So we need to monitor uh, the person's heartbeat continuously. So we are putting some kind of sensor in the heart. It can be a wired one or it can be wireless one. So it can detect the heartbeat. Uh, for example, using the ultrasonic uh, methodology, it can detect the heartbeat. The heartbeat is very minute. So you are measuring the very small change in the heartbeat uh, when the heart moves inside our, our body. So that one is a very small kind of voltage, or uh, even the very, you know, the heartbeat suddenly for, it can go very fast and suddenly it can be very slow. So we need to detect it very accurately. So in that kind of situation, the sensor should be very sensitive. So whatever the uh, uh, parameter detected by the sensor, it must be converted into analog voltage, but this will be very, very weak signal then we need to have some kind of amplifiers, analog amplifiers, and we need to have some kind of analog filters to filter out the noises and spikes. And then we will have the pure analog voltage. Then we have to perform this kind of 
digital conversion analog into digital conversion and process that and inside the microprocessor we will have some kind of threshold so for example we set the lower threshold lower threshold and we set the upper threshold or higher threshold so for example i i set up inside so lower threshold as 70 and the upper threshold is 80 it means if the heartbeat is between the 70 and the 80 then i get the green signal uh, or i i don't have any problem uh, but the microprocessor will not give any alert signal but in case if the heartbeat goes less than this lower threshold value maybe the person's heartbeat goes to 65 then the microprocessor will compare the real time measurement against the threshold value i set or i programmed into the microcontroller the lower threshold 70 so then 65 is not between the 70 and 80 it's less than 70 then immediately the microprocessor or the microcontroller will give some kind of buzzer or some kind of a sms notification or whatever to the doctor or the user then they will know okay this person is in the critical situation so he need a medical emergency so that is how we are using this microcontroller in real time uh, of course we can use different types of microcontrollers and microprocessors but the basic logic is the same okay so now we will move on uh, you can also go to the reference manual of the microcontroller and you can check the adc block diagram so you can see this is the adc block diagram of this f101 microcontroller so here you can see here uh, this these all are 16 external adc signals adc uh, x underscore in zero up to adc underscore x underscore in 15. so we have 16 external uh, adc signals which are connected to the microcontroller gpio ports because in the general purpose input output pin you can set up into any function so i can set up as a timer or i can set up as a adc or a spi so it's up to the user so but we are having 16 signals which is corresponding to adc function so uh, on the two internal signals so this these are the two internal signals so the temperature dot sensor and the v reference this is the reference uh, voltage that you can set up uh, so it has it means it has two internal signals and 16 external signals to this microcontroller uh, so internal signals are used to measure and compare voltage values so whatever that uh, the voltage you are measuring externally uh, and also you can set up this reference value this one will compare those values and also this is the actual analog to digital converter this is just like an interface these pins are receiving these adc signals and then through this multiplexer it's giving to this analog to digital converter in the analog to digital converter we have two channels that is injected channel and regular channels so the analog actually the technical operation as i said like we are not going to see what is happening in the technical operation inside but i already explained the logic this is what happening technically inside but here we are using these two channels so we will see now in detail uh, these channels and uh, the different modes of conversion um, so adc conversion can be performed by both hardware and software and after complete the conversion this adc will generate interrupt via dma request signal so for example this is the adc converter it's completed the uh, analog to digital conversion process and then it will generate some kind of dma request you know direct memory access so it means of okay it, for example i am sending like a 5 volt here analog signal and then this one is already converted this 5 volt into digital value so now it's 1111 if it's 8 bit analog if i use the 8 bit adc So this five volt i convert into these uh, digital numbers so once the result is ready this result must be stored into the memory 
so this memory uh, this analog to digital converter cannot use the cpu resource so it must use the dma direct memory access uh, control it so it will ask the permission from this dma so maybe the dma module is located somewhere here the, then this dma module will give the permission to transfer this data to access the memory maybe the memory is somewhere here so it's asking the request and then it giving the permission and then it's going through the bus and then transferring the data the result into this memory so as i mentioned like uh, last time we had seen about the dma dma is helping to transfer the data between memory and memory or between memory and peripherals so this adc is a peripheral and this is a memory is the uh, yeah, this adc is a peripheral and this is a memory so in this example this dma is helping to transfer the data between the peripheral and memory so that is why this, this is the operation here so we are receiving some kind of analog signals and uh, through the pins and then this analog to digital converter is performing conversion process after the conversion it needs to store the result so it's not asking the help from the cpu cpu is maybe somewhere sitting here cpu must be busy with some uh, computation operation mathematical operation so we are not using cpu and we are using the dma and asking the request from dma and the dma is helping to transfer this data into the registers or the memories okay there is also analog watch monitor uh, that can keep track of analog voltage whether it's within or exceeding the predefined upper and lower threshold value and whenever we make this measurement we are also having watch dog you can see watch it's watching always the value of the result if this result is uh, between this threshold value lower threshold and upper threshold or higher threshold then no problem so the watchdog will not do anything this is the watchdog timer and our watchdog monitor so in case if this measured value is beyond the threshold values then immediately the watchdog timer will give the alert or warning signal to the user